Hey guys, I'm Little Art Demon and welcome to my channel and thank you for clicking on today's video. And I would like to apologize for my voice, I've been a little bit sick lately, but I'm doing good, it's just my voice that's affected. And it's been a while, but we are finally back with Good Omens. I've missed talking about this show with you. As you read on the title, this video will be about spin-offs of the show, kind of. It's about ideas and storylines that could have happened in the show and some headcanons too. I've been drawing our two ineffable husbands a lot for the fanfic The Serpent's Carnation, available on AO3 if you'd like to read it, so I wanted to make some drawings of other characters as well. Don't worry, our two cuties will make an appearance in this video as well, but spin-offs tend to be about other characters, so I think it makes sense to explore that. Before you get started, don't forget to leave your like and subscribe if you haven't yet, so you don't miss future videos. And with that, let's get started. And the first one is actually kind of a Ned canon I have. According to Christianity, Gabriel was the one to tell Mary that she would carry Jesus. And in that story, Gabriel is a lovely little angel, very cute and sweet, telling her that she'll be blessed with God's baby. How wholesome! But as we all know, Gabriel in the show, especially in season 1, is a jerk. I've seen a few people talk about that, but it's usually just a joke. But what if there was something there worth exploring? Please prepare yourself for what comes next because this idea came to my brain in less than 5 minutes and made me cry more than I would like to admit. The only moments in the show we see Gabriel are in the Joes episode and in present time I believe. I don't think I missed any moment that would interfere with the timeline I made up. In the Joes episode, he isn't necessarily nice, but he isn't that much of an idiot either. I think in the present day he's a bit more extreme, mainly in the end of season 1, but he's always kinda like that, not nice at all. At least not until our precious baby Jim. But hear me out. I think he wasn't always like that. Let me set the scene for you. It is the day Gabriel was assigned to make the great announcement. He appeared to Mary and told her that she would be carrying the Son of God. I can only laugh when I imagine that interaction because he didn't even know how babies were made in the Job's episode, he has no idea what's going on. But I can imagine, after that, he was also in charge of looking after that family to some degree. It was one of the few times Gabriel had a mission on Earth. He doesn't really like Earth, we see in the show the only things he seems to like are the clothes and running. But he stayed there, at least for some moments, and he saw Jesus grow up. As we all know, God in Good Omens is not the most benevolent of all, Old Testament God and all that. Jesus, on the other hand, is all about love and being kind. So I imagine that, while spending time with Jesus, he learned a bit more about love and how humans can be good. I can just imagine Jesus taking him to see people and do stuff and him starting to enjoy some of it. But as we all know, he didn't get to live a long life. I can only imagine how it must have felt for Gabriel to lose him. It was the first time he made a connection to someone and he was starting to view the world differently. I like to think that he begged God to let Jesus return, even if it was just for a moment, so that he could say goodbye. And I'm getting emotional again. Yes, I'm a crybaby, but does it not make sense? After that tragic moment, Gabriel refused to make any other connection on Earth. Especially with humans because our lives are short in comparison to the almost immortal beings that are angels and demons. Until he and Beelzebub started to hang out at least. But what do you think? I think this would be a great spin-off just telling Jesus' life with the great humor of good omens. I think it could be fun and sad, but it's definitely fun to imagine. The second one isn't necessarily a Ned canon, it's more of an exploration of the timeline. And it is about Warlock. I would love to see more of his life with Nanny Astereth and brother Francis. Because 1. Crowley is gorgeous as a nanny, I love her so much you, you don't even understand. And 2. I just think it would be super fun to see all the shenanigans that went on. Because even if Warlock isn't the Antichrist, that kid is still a demon spawn. He wrote a rude word on the description of a dinosaur and I took that personally, I love dinosaurs. And he also didn't let Aziraphale enjoy his magic act. But I've seen a lot of fan arts and short comics of Crowley teaching him how to do evil things and being proud until it backfires terribly. I saw one where Crowley said that Warlock should kick everyone that says something he doesn't like and he's super proud of it until he kicks so zero fell. It just makes me laugh to imagine those two raising a child. And on the other hand, I think that Warlock would be a menace trying to prank Crowley and a zero fell trying to stop him so that Crowley isn't upset. And I do think he would ship the nanny and Gardner and would try to get them together somehow. I think that would be lovely to have Warlock trying to get them to know each other even if they've been together for about 6000 years. And since Scroll is already great with plants, I can just imagine how he would help Aziraphale in the garden too. It would be adorable. 
Oh, and another thing I would love to see would be how they deal with the parents. Especially our queen, Crowley. I saw a short post where Crowley was like, it's Christmas, should I get him a doll or a car? And the parents want a boy's toy, and Crowley just doesn't get it and doesn't care enough to get it, and Warlock decides he wants both because they're rich and can buy everything. I think moments like that would be lovely and adorable and also funny. And again with a sad ending or bittersweet because eventually Crowley and Aziraphale leave Warlock. I don't know how that must have felt for him, but I'm sure he wasn't super happy. And he grew up, occasionally thinking why they both left at the same time, hoping they would be together somewhere. I know this isn't the most original idea, there are tons of fanfics about it, I'm sure of it, but it's still sweet and I wanted to draw it. And for the third idea, we are again in for a crazy headcanon that I made up in minutes inside my brain. Sometimes the inspiration strikes and my brain is overflown with fanfic material. So let me take you on a journey again. Earth doesn't exist yet, we are before the beginning. There are no demons, they're all still angels. And we have one angel in specific, don't know his name back then, but he's now known as Eric or Disposable Demon. From the show I think we can assume he isn't a super high ranking demon, so I assume he wasn't an high ranking angel either. But for this story I imagine that he would have been somehow involved with the creation of humans. Not the main one in charge, but with some details to work on. And I think he would come up with the idea that if humans were to believe in God, even if most of them didn't see much proof of our existence, then they may have a strong faith. And if they have a strong faith, why not give them more belief options? And I'm not talking about other religions that overlap with Jesus or the angels or prophets, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about religions that are completely different, they have different stories and characters. One of my favorites being Greek mythology, but Egyptian mythology and Norse mythology are also great. So I imagine you start to create those stories so that they can be spread by humans on Earth. There was only one problem, he couldn't write very well, so he ends up finding someone to help him. And that someone is none other than our sweet angel Muriel. I imagine Muriel would find the whole idea incredible and the story is really good. So they would work together for a good while until it was the day of the presentation. But when he told God his idea, she was not pleased with it. They took him and Muriel by surprise. He asked if anyone else worked on that idea, but he refuses, taking the blame all for himself. That way he ends up falling, but Muriel is still safe in heaven. But somewhere in the meantime, he either put that idea among the approved ones before falling, or Muriel took care of that as a way to be reminded of their first friend. And as time passes, they didn't talk that much with each other, Muriel doesn't leave heaven after all, but they would still occasionally share ideas with their stories in secret. I just think those two low ranking angels and demons are super cute. Of course, Muriel has a bigger place in my heart, they're sweet, but Eric is very cool too. I think they would be good friends. But that's it for today's spin-offs, thank you for listening to me even if my voice sounds crazy. And which one was your favorite? I honestly love the Gabriel and Jesus one, I hope I explained it well enough here. But in any case, tell me in the comments which one you like the most and also if you have any headcanons or spin-offs you like to see. And don't forget to leave your like and subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss more uploads. Thank you again for watching, I truly appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!